Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. In today's video, we are going to be looking at cellular respiration, specifically oxidative phosphorylation. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe, turn on your notifications because I upload every Thursday with a new topic. Now, in today's lesson, we are going to be specifically focusing on oxidative phosphorylation. So if you haven't gone and watched the glycolysis video or the Krebs cycle first, I suggest you go and do that now. So picking up in our last lesson, we were looking at step-by-step -step processes moving through glycolysis, the Krebs, and then oxidative phosphorylation. I'm going to remind you one more time of how this goes. So glycolysis is where we begin and that is going to filter down into the Krebs cycle. The purpose of glycolysis is to access the hydrogens that we find around a glucose molecule. After we have accessed those hydrogens, we're going to go into the Krebs cycle. And the Krebs cycle's purpose is to harvest hydrogens. Hydrogens are our main energy carriers, and so we need to harvest as many of them as possible because they are going to provide the necessary energy to finish the final stage, the stage we're doing today, which is oxidative phosphorylation. This is the stage where we are going to use these hydrogens to produce ATP molecules, hence the name of phosphorylation. We are going to add phosphorus. Now, before we get into the actual um, production of ATP in our phosphorylation step, I need to make sure that everybody knows where this is all taking place. So glycolysis, if you remember from our video, takes place in the cytosol. Our Krebs cycle takes place inside the matrix inside of the mitochondria itself. It's like the filling of the mitochondria. But where exactly does oxidative phosphorylation take place? It takes place on the membrane of the mitochondria. Now, to remind you of the structure, the mitochondria has an outer membrane and it has an inner membrane. This whole process takes place on the inner membrane. And it's important that you familiarize the um, structure of the membrane because I'm going to be using it in my explanation. Now, in the membrane itself, we have our phospholipid layer, which is all of these yellow ball-like structures. And then embedded in that layer are these very, very large protein channels. They are called cytochromes. And essentially, they are going to assist in the production of our um, ATP molecules. And they do that by essentially playing um, a game where they're passing along a, a hydrogen electron all the way along. It almost does this little jumping effect where the hydrogen is going to jump from the one and it jumps to the next and then it jumps to the last at the very end. If we were to zoom in on this, as we see here in our second picture, we have our cytochrome and what we have is a hydrogen at the top. The hydrogen is providing the necessary energy in order for us to make the ATP molecule. And as you see, as the hydrogen moves through the cytochrome, it allows us to take an ADP, fuse it with a phosphate, and create ATP and water. And this is what we call ATP synthesis. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do this step by step and how this actually works. Now let's look at oxidative phosphorylation. Now the diagram I'm going to draw for you now is something like a schematic drawing, which basically means that I'm not drawing a physical um, model of what this really looks like. I am using a almost metaphorical image to help me easily explain how this works. And so you'll see now I'm going to draw like a flight of stairs. That's not physically what it looks like, but actually it has some similarity to how the hydrogen jumps from one cytochrome to the next. I'm just going to use a very simple diagram to explain this process. So in order to start phosphorylation, we need an important component from the Krebs cycle, which was NADH. It was the hydrogen carrier. And along comes NADH, and it delivers the hydrogen to this phase. That hydrogen we are going to use in order for us to start the whole process of creating ATP. Now, once NAD has done its job, off it goes back to the Krebs cycle, and it is going to collect another hydrogen, and it's going to do this over and over again. So we think of NAD as a like a wheelbarrow picking up hydrogen. Now, our hydrogen atom or electron that we technically have here, um, it is going to go through a process of giving off its energy. And the way in which I'm going to draw that is with a flight of stairs. And I want you to imagine every step that I draw 
a drop in its energy level. So our hydrogen is going to start off at a high level of energy and it's going to drop. It's going to go down, drop. And it's going to go all the way down. It's going to do it four times, right? So this little staircase that I've drawn here for you is technically a representation of the inner membrane of the mitochondria. I want you to imagine these being those folds, right? That we have the cristae. And you are going to now follow along and see how this hydrogen is going to provide energy in order to make ATP. So first things first, we're going to need an ADP and a phosphate. And so in order to join those two together and essentially infuse energy into it, because that's what we're doing, we're infusing energy into it, ADP and its phosphate comes along and it swoops past and the hydrogen provides enough energy for the phosphate to join and create a TP. And in doing so, the effect on the hydrogen is that it lowers its energy level. So you see it takes a step down. This process is going to happen again. Along comes an ADP molecule with a phosphate. It's going to swoop past our hydrogen, which is in the membrane, and we're going to form an ATP molecule, and the hydrogen then lowers itself to a slightly lower energy level. So it's gone down a step, and it'll do it again. Along comes an ADP molecule, diphosphate, remember, and we join in and we swoop, and we form a ATP molecule. And yet again, our hydrogen has taken another step to a lower format. It does this one more time, so we're going to fill that in. And as it takes this final step and makes this final piece of ATP, we are left with a hydrogen molecule that's actually quite low energy. It sees all the way down at the bottom of the stairs. And so someone has to look after that hydrogen because hydrogen doesn't like to be on its own. It actually has to be looked after by someone or it needs to be attached to somebody else. And the final hydrogen acceptor is oxygen. And so oxygen, which has been a part of this process um, since the Krebs cycle, oxygen is the final acceptor of the hydrogen molecule. So this hydrogen molecule has been working really hard. I mean, we accessed it in glycolysis, we harvested it in the Krebs cycle, and now we're using it to make ATP. And so at the very end of its journey, it is going to produce the byproduct of water. We're going to stick that hydrogen and that oxygen together to make water. And that water is the water vapor that you breathe out along with the carbon dioxide that you produce. So now, as you can see at the end of this process, we have made many ATP molecules and that energy can go off and it can be used for growth, movement, any of the life processes that require energy. And so essentially that means that at the end of our whole cellular respiration cycle, you make roughly 32 ATP molecules. Now, I know that you can't see 32 over here, um, but it's 32 that are used and produced throughout the whole cycle. Remember, we've looked at a very simplified version of the whole Krebs and oxidative phosphorylation. As always, I like to finish off our lessons with a terminology recap. So let's start off by looking at what cristae is. Cristae are the folds inside the mitochondria. Remember, the mitochondria is where all of this cellular respiration is taking place. And the cristae form the inner membrane. It's the folds, should I say, of the inner membrane. This is where oxidative phosphorylation takes place. And my representation of that um, in my drawing was the little steps that I drew for you. Now, sitting inside of that inner membrane are cytochromes. Cytochromes are those um, proteins that are embedded in the wall of that membrane, and they assist in the production of ATP. Basically, they are tiny little factories that are helping us stick things together. Now, I spoke about energy carriers as well, and there are a few in these examples, one of them being the main, which one is, is ATP. It's the energy carrier we're trying to produce. But there are a couple of other energy carriers like NADH that are also considered energy carriers because they're carrying around hydrogen. And then we looked at phosphorylation, which is the process of adding a phosphate. So that is where we take an ADP molecule and we turn it into an ATP molecule. That is phosphorylation. 
As always, everybody, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn your notifications on, and I will see you again soon. Bye.